welcome to a very special edition of Gogglebox Live. I'm your host, Alex Varley, and I'm honored to be sitting here today, joined by a very special Ian Livingston. It's a pleasure to have you here. Welcome to the studio. Um, can I just say congratulations on your New Year's honor? Oh, thank you very much. Yes, um, it was uh, brilliant. Well, now that you've been awarded a CBE, how should I address you? Is it a OBE CBE or a CBE OBE? You can call me Ian if you like. That'd be good. But I'm, I'm going to go with in, that. In reality, um, you actually drop the OBE when you get the CBE. All right. But, um, I didn't know that. That's, that's a bit of uh, yeah. good advice for me for the future. Um, throughout the show, we're going to have these, have these images playing, and um, I hope it's going to bring back some pretty good memories for you. Um, good memories, and I'm sure you're going to embarrass me at some points as well. I, I hope I'm not going to. <laughs> it's, like, it's a pleasure to have you here, so I don't want to embarrass you. It's fine. But for, every, um, for everybody out there who's going to be watching the show, here, and you don't know who Ian is, Ian is the co-founder of the Games Workshop, which was founded in 1975 and is create, credited with bringing Dungeons and Dragons to Europe. Then in 1977, um, Ian started the White Dwarf magazine, which was the UK's first interactive magazine. And you also worked as an editor for five years at the same time as growing the Games Workshop, which is now into 300 stores worldwide. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> you're a bit of, um, you're like, you're a bit of a, an icon and a, a visionary. Um, but our talented, as I said, our talented behind the scenes production team have created this for us. And it's hopefully not going to embarrass you, but we'll carry the show on whilst it goes through. Um, and I'm going to be asking you some questions now. And I hope you can answer them to the best of your ability. And sure. I hope I can't. I hope I don't want to embarrass you. So, um, when did you first hear about that you're going to be getting a CBE? Uh, I got a, a, a letter about a month ago. Um, you get one from the cabinet office, and they say that the prime minister is uh, minded to recommend that you are awarded CBE, be appointed CBE, and you have to effectively tick the box and say mm -hmm. that you would gratefully accept it. So. Um, it's a very exciting moment to, to see that letter and of course you write and say you're going to accept it and you post it and hope it gets back to the cabinet office and you wait a month, yeah. sworn to secrecy and it was actually on the day of my birthday, the 29th of December, that it was published in the national press saying uh, I've been uh, appointed CB and it was amazing. I can't Best imagine birthday it, present I could ever have had. I can't imagine it be, like, being hard to tick the box. I can imagine <laughs> it to be like, amazing. Um, so you've been awarded an OBE, a CBE, and you got a BAFTA. These uh, they're like very prestigious awards. Which one do you feel most proud of, or are you proud of them all? Uh, when you set off in life, you don't aim to get anything. You're mm. just following a dream. In my case, it was turning a hobby of playing games into a, a business of making them and hopefully creating content that I enjoyed myself mm. and hopefully other people would do. And in the, the latter stages of my career, I've been trying to raise the profile of the games industry and address two of the issues that concern me and others in the industry. That's the, the skills issue and, uh, and the cost of production of games. Mm -hmm. So I've been lobbying for production tax credit, which is going through uh, consultation at the moment and is likely to be announced in, in April this year as becoming law. And of course, uh, highlighting the, the skills shortage in, in computer science and mm -hmm. uh, having co-authored next gen um, report, which main recommendation to have computer science in the school's national curriculum as an essential discipline. Try to get children not just using applications, but creating their own applications. And these skills are not just applicable to the games industry, they're important for all the creative digital industries, for um, obviously for games and visual effects, but also for fighting cybercrime, creating uh, in the next jet propulsion engine, yep. computer coders at the heart of everything. And so I've worked, I would say, it's uh, tirelessly on promoting the games it's industry. And to be rewarded and acknowledged for mm -hmm. the work you've done is a fantastic, satisfying thing to have. Well, it's pretty amazing. I'm sure you're, you're like proud of it and your family's proud of it. Um, now, we've read Google Chairman Eric Schmidt's comment on ICT ed education in the UK and how beneficial it is and how beneficial it is to your campaign to have people like him. Is it, is it beneficial to have people like him commenting on the issue? It, it certainly helps more than any other thing, yeah. other thing because when Next Gen was published, um, it was applauded for its content. Uh, people are suddenly understanding that we have to empower our creative nation because we are brilliantly creative in this country. Look at our fashion, our film, our architecture, our design, our music, uh, our, and of course our games. And yet, in the digital world in which we live, as games 
and everything becomes digital, we have to have digital skills. Mm -hmm. So NextGen highlighted that, the, the shortest of skills in this country. And it wasn't until NextGen was referenced by Eric Schmidt in his yeah. speech in Edinburgh mm -hmm. that suddenly everyone took notice because if Eric said it, it must be true. Mm -hmm. And a month later, the Prime Minister echoed his words and said, yes, more must be done to teach yeah. computer science. And that opened the door to first number 10 and then to meet Michael Gove's special advisors. And that, the penny dropped. Okay. People realized that this had to be done in this country. So since your campaign, have there been any changes to the government attitudes towards ICT education? Like, has anything been put into place to improve the curriculum? Well, as a result of our meetings with Department for Education, um, Michael Gove, just about a year ago in his BET speech, announced that the current program of study for ICT was going to be disapplied. And it happened in, in September and was going to be replaced with a new curriculum which had computer science at its core. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing is now happening, yep. uh, new curriculums being drawn up, um, new examining yep. um, uh, exams being built around the curriculum. So well, it's all about implementation from the recommendations now. Well now, um, we've got, obviously we know that you stretch for time and we've got the most important question for you. Um, we've heard through the grapevine that you're a Manchester City fan. <laughs> um, and being the life president um, of IDOS, we were wondering, if your love for the Blues influenced your decision to sponsor them. But um, it's now, like, as I said, the most important question is, everyone here at the Gogglebox Life has been itching to know, did Man City win the Premier League last year? Because there's been a lot, of, I mean, there's been a lot of talk around here, and was wondering whether it actually happened or whether it's one of your fantasy games. Well, in my world, it happened. Yeah. Uh, I hope it happened in everybody else's world. And getting back to the days of IDOS sponsoring Manchester City, mm. what an extraordinary coincidence that was, wasn't it? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was pretty extraordinary. <laughs> and it's, like, it's, well, it's pretty amazing that you could, like, you could sponsor um, like your, own, your own team that you... Oh, it, was, it was wonderful to be part of that for three years, a uh, shared sponsor of City. You know, that's one of those dreams come true. Mm. But that's all we've got time for today, and I'm very sorry, but it's been great having you here. And, um, as I said, it's <laughs> um, but thank you for your time, Ian. Um, and so from all of us here at Gogglebox Live, thank you and all the best for the future. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you.